Welcome back to the Quick Start Guide for Recovery from Addiction and Co-Occurring Disorders. In this section, we're going to start talking about something fun, and that's adding triggers for a recovery lifestyle. I am your host, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. Now we're going to switch focus from eliminating all the negative stuff and fi- figuring out how to deal with crap when it happens and adding and move to adding triggers for health and recovery. How can you make your environment awesome? Just like with unpleasant triggers, there are physical, affective, cognitive, uh, environmental, and relational triggers that you can add to make your recovery process, make your recovery journey uh, more pleasant. Let's talk about some of those physical protective factors. Physical things are things that you can do to improve your health and happiness. Nutrition, for example. Our body is a machine. Nutrition is the fuel. Our body uses the food we eat to make the neurotransmitters that help us feel happy and energetic, that helps us concentrate, that helps us, you know, get sleep, you know. We need a healthy diet in order for our body machine to function properly. So good nutrition is essential. And we're going to talk a lot about that when we get to the section on nutrition. Just start paying attention to how well you eat. Do you eat a variety of colorful foods each day? And Skittles and M&Ms don't count. I mean like fruits, vegetables, you know, something that is other than white and brown. Hydration is really important. When you are as little as 1% dehydrated, your ability to concentrate goes down significantly. Uh, Your mood and your energy levels will also start to plummet because your body system is not functioning as well. It's like trying to run an engine without oil. You need that hydration. It's important to reduce stimulants. Things like nicotine stays in, stays in your body for about four hours. Uh, caffeine can stay in your body for up to 12 hours after you use it. So whatever latte you're drinking at 4 p.m. or Monster or energy drink, whatever it is, at 4 p.m. is still going to be impairing your sleep and keeping you more awake at 4 a.m., That means, you know, if you're drinking significant amounts of stimulants at dinner time, you're probably going to have crappy sleep. Sunlight is super important for helping to set your circadian rhythms. And those are the rhythms that help your body know when to secrete cortisol, which helps you wake up and get out of bed in the morning. You need a little bit of cortisol, not too much. And when it's time to start making melatonin to go to sleep, Sunlight is super important. Sunlight also helps your body make vitamin D, which is way more available to your body machine than any vitamin D you can take in a pill. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes of sunlight to get the vitamin D you need each day. Sunlight is super important. Vitamin D deficiencies are associated with increases in depression and anxiety, fatigue, you know, all kinds of things. So vitamin D is super helpful. And lately they've also found that vitamin D deficiencies are also associated with a reduced immunity. And, you know, it's important to be able to stay physically healthy. Sleep is super important. And that means quality sleep. When you're awake, your body builds up a chemical called adenosine in your brain. And as adenosine builds up, the more adenosine there is, the sleepier you are. Well, that makes sense. That's your body's way of helping you regulate your sleep cycle. However, when you go to sleep, if you don't get quality sleep, if you don't get that good deep sleep, your body can't clear out the adenosine from your brain. So you're going to wake up the next morning and you're still going to feel kind of groggy, have difficulty concentrating, maybe even feel a little bit hungover. Good quality sleep is essential for balancing neurotransmitters, clearing out that adenosine, and helping your body rest and repair to prevent pain issues. Exercise 
not everybody loves to exercise, but exercise is important. It doesn't have to be hard. They found that exercise at 40 to 50% of your target heart rate zone, which is akin to walking around the block, you know, taking your dog for a walk, not, you know, power walking. Any kind of exercise that increases your oxygenation, makes you breathe a little bit more, uh, is going to help your mood. It's going to help increase the release of what they call endogenous opioids and serotonin. Both of those, just don't worry about what they are. They're feel-good chemicals. You know, that's, that's the big message there. When you exercise, when you increase the oxygen in your body, you're going to increase your energy levels. You're also going to likely increase some of your feel-good chemicals. So even if you're feeling bad, Adding some feel-good chemicals can help raise your mood a little bit. Think about running a bath. If the bath is too hot, turning on some cold water can help make it feel a little less uncomfortable. Pain management is super important. If you're in pain, your HPA axis, your threat response system is going to be elevated, which is going to increase your cortisol levels too high. It's going to increase your stress hormones too high. And it's going to reduce your calming chemicals like serotonin, um, which is going to increase your perception of pain. It's also going to, when you've got pain, it contributes to systemic inflammation, which is associated with increases in depression. And most people just don't like being in pain. So we may be more likely to want to self-medicate that pain to make it go away. Learn techniques for pain management. And finally, just your general health. It's important to stay healthy. When you are sick with the flu, when you've got a cold, when you've got an earache, you're probably going to have more difficulty dealing with life on life's terms. Think about what things you can do in each of these areas, nutrition, sunlight, sleep, exercise, pain management, and health that will become part of your recovery lifestyle. What steps can you start taking today to increase your physical protective factors and help your body machine function efficiently? And how can you remember to do each one of these things? For example, if you want to improve your hydration, maybe you start carrying a water bottle with you. Affective protective factors. These are your emotional things. Not only do we want to deal with unpleasant emotions when they come up, but we want to add in pleasant emotions. Positive emotions can help balance out distress. And those positive emotions can include happiness, curiosity, determination, confidence, or just the ability to self-regulate when you get upset. Think about three things that you can do to enhance each one of these positive emotions that will become part of your recovery lifestyle. Like for happiness, I go to YouTube every morning and I find a video that makes me smile. Sometimes it's just a baby laughing at somebody ripping paper. Other times it's funny animal videos. But think about three things you can do to enhance each one of these and how you're going to remember to do them every single day. It's important, like I said, that bath, your stress and unpleasant feelings are like turning on the hot water. When you increase your positive feelings, you're turning on the cold water. You're increasing some of those positive uh, brain chemicals that are going to dampen down or balance out some of the stress chemicals. Positive health behaviors will support your body in rebalancing and recovering. Just like it helps to make a bath more comfortable when it's too hot, if you turn down the hot water and run some cold, the same is true for your brain chemistry. Early recovery is hard. It hurts sometimes. And it's important not, to, not only to feel hurt, it's important to give yourself permission to be happy. You know, you're going to have to work through the hurt, but it's also important to give yourself permission to be happy during your recovery process. You don't have to wallow in guilt and grief the whole time. You know, there's a time for that. There's a time to deal with your stuff, but there's also a time to take a break and be able to figure out what you want to feel like when you have achieved recovery. <music>